Welcome guys to the OC show and I'm here with Peter in Moscow on the occasion of the ASUS AOC in the Moscow Cyber Stadium. Hi yeah. Peter, how's it going? Uh, everything is going very well. Um, I'm, enjoying, I'm, I'm enjoying Russia and Moscow even though it's very very cold but yeah. Yeah, it's been pretty cold here, like oh, minus seven or something. But yeah, it's not it's not that bad. I mean, but for us from Taipei, I mean, there's quite a quite a difference. There is a a, yeah, a significant temperature difference, and uh, yeah, well, we're here for the OC show, and a lot of has happened since the last show, right? Yeah. So the last show, if you guys remember, we were on the road somewhere in Germany. Uh, oh yeah. That was on the occasion of the Gamescom, and uh, so yeah, since then quite a things happen, especially OC events. Yeah, over, that's why we do the OC show, right? But a lot of competitions, and I think the, the first one we have to talk about is the MSI MOA 2014 competition, yep. which was in uh, the middle of October, so last month, right? Yep. And um, so there was two parts in this competition. Uh, there was a classic battle and then a freestyle battle. So the classic battle was... Um, exactly like the previous edition so msi supplies the hardware and then yeah. the overclockers have to kind of figure out figure out how far they can push the hardware and then whoever gains the most points in the three benchmark stages wins the competition uh, and, and i think it was very interesting this year because for the graphics card they had an unreleased gtx 780 ti moa edition yeah that's and a special edition crafted for moa yes so. and it was pretty impressive actually vv who won that stage who won the 3d stage managed to clock it up to i think the third best haswell plus GTX 780 Ti score and these cards were untested before they, they just got those cards on the competition yeah so that MOA competition went pretty well there was about eight, 18 contestants mm -hmm. was supposedly 19 at the start uh, including the, um, the winner from last year but uh, it happened that uh, Arbuas had some uh, uh, yeah, I think he was uh, sick. On so he was he was very very ill. I mean, you so cannot take the plane and yeah, you cannot travel with a, with thirty nine degrees centigrade. Even doesn't matter how much you want to be at the event. Yeah, yeah with all what is going on right now, this, that was yeah for sure no mm. way. So yeah, we, we missed Abuas for that competition, but in the end everything went well. Um, three new, three winners of course on the first day, but also some winners on the second day yeah. for the freestyle slash no limits battle, right? So in the in the in the classic battle, the winner was Vivi from South Africa, which is first very big title in an overclocking competition. Yeah. Um, second place was Tulsi, which is last year's winner of the of the classic battle. And in third third place we have um, uh, OC Windforce from South Korea, which was the winner from the two previous editions yeah, before 20, 2012 yeah. right so that's a that's a quite an impressive podium and then on the no limits battle side the no limits was essentially um you could bring your own hardware and you had to mm. achieve as much global first place and hardware first place as possible and you received five points for a global first place and two points for a hardware per first place yeah so uh the winner of the no limits battle it was uh wizardy from france who was also at the aoc competition in second place we had b-boy jazz from uh, from indonesia and then in third place the ponzi from uh from Australia, yeah. uh, from uh, United States. Sorry. Yeah, and uh, that uh, that no limits battle was interesting because you had a set of uh, ten benchmarks that were yeah. pre-selected by MSI. And uh, uh, fifteen. Uh, fifteen. Uh, fifteen yeah. yeah. And uh, the guys had to uh, strategize before, right? Uh, sit back, get ready with the right hardware. And some guys, such as a uh, Wizardy, for example, that just ruled that 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 part of the competition came there and was literally benching two systems at the same time no. for the eight hours of the competition non-stop and his strategy was was pretty interesting but also pretty nifty he went on H on hw button and he looked at all the rankings where there was not that much competition and then purchased those cpus specifically to run them at, through as much benchmarks uh, as possible and the strategy paid off. Yes, well, very clearly he won. He won the competition. I think uh, B-Boy Jazz had uh, had roughly the same strategy. Yeah, he was benching two systems as well. Yeah, and he had. Uh, yeah, the, both of them were always like head head to head during the entire competition. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that was MOA. Very successful. Um, a lot of people joined on the live stream. I think so far it has been one of the most successful last live stream in this year and since ever in the history of overclocking. But it starts to be a growing audience of people that enjoy watching streams of overclocking competition especially this year that we had uh, uh, stepped up even more the, the game in terms of uh, capture cards and being able to see yeah. what is going on on the system so half of the contestants were connected to that system and we could uh, show on the live stream exactly what was going on have a commentary by uh, Dennis Garcia from uh, Hardware Asylum and Truthman from OCTV and explaining um, to the guys watching what was going on exactly why are they tweaking this at this point if there's a blue screen we could read out the, the error code for example from the blue screen and explain okay this means this driver 
something else so you know that that was really really cool we have to give a shout out to the msi uh, msi team as well because i think the msi uh, the moa 2014 competition was one of the best editions they uh, they organized in terms of mm. planning and organization and the benchmark selection everything was was perfect and we look forward to to next year's next year's edition for sure yeah, yeah um, we, we hit some rumors again about next year's edition and i guess those are right like every year so yeah. there's no reason that it's going to stop so after MOA, we had a, a short break and then we had to fly out to right here in Russia, Moscow, for the AOC, the ACES Open Overclocking Cup 2014. Yeah. Uh, th this is a competition that, not like, uh, unlike MOA, it's not a global competition. So it's a regional for, um, for, um, uh, the, for Europe and then CIS states in yeah. um, uh, Russia and then the, the, neighboring, the neighboring countries there. Um, and they had the qualification on HWBOT and they formed uh, eight, eight teams of, uh, of two people, so 16 people in total who could compete here in the Moscow Cyber Stadium for, uh, for the big prize. Yeah. yeah, so that was the third edition. Last year's edition, uh, the, so the first one was in Ukraine, in Kiev. And uh, last year's edition was on a, on a game conference, uh, kind of like a little bit like Gamescom actually, but mm -hmm. the, the Russian version of it. And that was a massive event in, st in terms of uh, traffic and was really quite a, quite a stressful event for contestants because there was always people around. And here this place is completely I ideal for that kind of competition. Very quiet. Uh, the people could, that could watch the competition had this kind of area where th we, the overclockers were on some kind of central battleground and people could be around. There were couches to sit. It was really, really ideal for that kind of thing. Yeah. And in terms of the, 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 the platform or the competition, it's, uh, again, ASUS and, and its partners would provide all the hardware and then the overclockers have to figure out how to clock the hardware. And uh, I think the platform was pretty interesting. You had a Haswell eCPU, the 5960X, eight cores, mm -hmm. the Rampage 5 Extreme, and then the GTX 980 Strix card, um, which they hadn't pre-tested before. So they, they really just, they, they, gave the them, box, right? they gave them retail boxes and you have to unpack the box yourself and just start overclocking them. Yeah. And within a, within a period of, of seven, seven hours, roughly like that, all the overclockers managed to max out their graphics cards, which is which is amazing. I mean that that's a that that's a clear display of a skill set that these overclockers that participate at these kind of events have. Yeah, and even for benching for like six or seven hours straight, there has been no hardware failure in that competition yes. either. The the only issues that came up were actually on the second day where it was more freestyle, and then the guys were actually really pushing a lot harder because they 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 had in mind of targeting records of current global first places on the X99 platform. Yeah, uh, for example, to to just point out how good the results were at the competition uh, we're looking at the the fire strike extreme single gpu ranking and seven out of the eight teams scored better than the top the num the current number number 10 in the mm. the overall the global for the global ranking of the fire strike extreme single gpu so that is pretty impressive yeah extremely expressive and it also in case uh, in terms of uh, like the, the 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 results achieved by the guys in terms of you know like uh, being there, some guys like Giorgio Primo didn't have uh, any experience on X99 at all when they arrived here. Like he was totally relying on the Extrematics experience to to manage the system. So the team kind of strategized in this way that one guy was really focusing on the benching and the other guy was controlling temperatures, taking care of insulation, prepping the cards. So for example in the Cinebench stage, most of the guys, one was modding for the upcoming 3D stages while the other one was taking care of the 2D. Yeah. So in the end, after seven hours, uh, the German team formed by Dan Kopp and Bunch, uh, Bench Bros won the competition yep. in a very, very tight battle with Extreme Addict and Giorgio Primo. It was okay. decided literally in the last 30 minutes of the competition. And the guys were like fighting on benchmark yeah. score one after another. I think they the were first, they were first. The difference, so the difference between place number one and place number two was about 40 points in yeah, Fire Strike marks, Extreme. Yes. So essentially, I mean, it's 40 points in Fire Strike Extreme. That makes the difference between winning or losing. And in third place, uh, there was a team formed by Wizard T and mm, uh, Terra Ter Raptor. Yes. And we were kind of focusing on the top two during the competition, but looking back at the results, actually, Wizard T and Terra Raptor, if they would have had the best Fire Strike Extreme score, they would have won the competition. Yeah. So it was a three way battle until the very last second of the competition, which, which is very exciting. Yeah, and what we have also to consider is that Smoke and 12, so the Russian team, they were not that far away as well from Wizard T and Terra Raptor. Th those guys were battling on some of the early 2D, uh, 3D stages. 
So yeah, very very tight competition. Overall, I think this event is 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 almost a new standard for uh, live overclocking competitions, mainly because of the, the the choice of venue. You know, this is this is an esports cyber stadium, mm -hmm. and I think it really um, solidif solidifies overclocking as becoming this new also esport. We had a uh, you can probably see it in the back. We had a live 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 uh, uh, big big live scoreboard up on uh, up on yep. stage. Everyone's looking at the scoreboard and. Yeah, yeah I think this the is results by each team, mm. knowing what's going on. So, and well, that actually ties in with with an, a new project that we are launching launching on January first. You know, yeah, indeed, because that live scoreboard was actually pulled off from that project. Yeah, so it's a new project called OCEsports.io, and it's um it's a website that is a hundred percent focused on competitive overclocking. Mm -hmm. So everything that is related to overclocking competitions, whether it's live or online is on that on that website and we tie it in with hwbot.org as mm -hmm. a, as the, the the competition aspect of it um and well we we started beta testing in on october 1st and on january 1st we go live with the with the final with the final version so that side is not competing with the uh, competition page on hwbot this is a replacement of what used to be uh, the competition si uh, part of the site on HWBot. So, so HWBot.org has a couple of different features and one of the features is our competition engine. And we've always tried to build the competitions online and live through HWBot through this, this, this competition engine, as mm -hmm. we call it. And we decided that this competition engine is, is so strong that it actually deserves its own platform. So we kind of take out the competition part, keep the links with hwbot.org. You'll find all the competitions there, you know, all the information yeah, there. Submissions yeah, but it will just, yeah, and all, all the submissions will still yeah. be on hwbot.org. There is nothing being replaced. We just add a new platform for this competitive. Yeah, so if you submit to OC Esports, it also submits, of course, to the database on hwbot. Correct, yeah. No? And so, uh, so from that, uh, from that uh, moment on in January when the site is going to go really live at 100%, what else is coming into that site that is kind of new and not just competitions? <laughs> so actually there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff coming in 2015. I think 2015 is going to be a, a hell, hellish year for us in terms of <laughs> traveling and stuff like that. So next to the new OC Esports platform, we also have planned our HW World Tour 2015. And the World Tour is, um, is an extension of the uh, OC anniversary gathering we did last year at Computex. Right. And instead of just one event, we have now uh, three confirmed events and a fourth one in the planning, uh, which we can't really say anything about because yep. it's not, not confirmed yet. Uh, but yeah, three, three planned events. The first one is uh, early March in Canada. Then we have the second one uh, early April in France, in, mm -hmm. in Europe. And then we have, of course, um, early June, um, the, the after, after party of Computex again. Yeah, so all those Taipei. events are on the format of a gathering. So people uh, bring their own hardware and uh, in the same kind of spirit of the LAN party, for example, where people bring their computer and play games, here people bring their computer and benchmark for three yeah. days. So we have, uh, there's, there's uh, three parts of it. The first part is the world, the world tour, which mm -hmm. is the gatherings, as she mentioned. The second part is the World Series. And the World Series are a, a, a set of live overclocking competitions that we host at these World Tour events. Okay. And um, the, the World Series um, uh, hasn't been announced on the, on the site yet, I think. Uh, but it's, a, it's very, very simple. We have a couple of benchmarks. And then whoever can set the best scores during the, the World Tour uh, gathering yep. for those specific benchmarks, they get points and then the winner gets a nice cash prize or a, some hardware prizes. And we host, we host these World Series events at each of the World Tour so gatherings. So exclusively for that. If you're yep. not attending the events, then you cannot join the World Series no. competitions. Correct. So you have to travel to the events and compete live there. Mm to win the prizes in the World Series. And then we also have the World Series for amateurs, which is something that we will do at the, at, the, at the event in France, where we uh, actually have a, we'll have a workshop for people who pass by our venue, um, mainly to introduce new people to overclocking. And we'll have a, we'll have a nice uh, introduction to overclocking and then we'll funnel them through to, to the, the, the rookie competition there. And yeah. you know, there's, there's, it's got to be an interesting competition. So people can qualify for two days and then the best 16 people will compete on the third day in a, in a, in a, in a bracket system, single elimination for, a, for a, also a nice yeah. prize, actually. So that's the spirit also behind those uh, OC gathering is sure there are extreme guys, the, the, the usual crowd or the, some of the extreme guys that don't always have the access to them too that will come there. But we also expect people that 
that are more like uh, I would say more enthusiastic about OC but at, at a much lower level like for example the rookies uh, that mm -hmm. are competing on HDI but that have water cooling systems on for their daily use and that just enjoy overclocking but want to try the, the step ahead to go extreme and that's that gathering is probably the only place where they can meet the guys and discuss and learn and share knowledge about the things yeah correct and yeah that, that's 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 something that we really want to want to work on and actually um as we're recording this we're we, we're flying out in about two hours or in about two hours we have to go to the airport uh we're flying out to taipei again and then one week later we're already flying out again to indonesia yeah and and I at indonesia we are attending the aoct uh competition which is a which is a competition organized by the by the guys from jagatreview.com and it's only for rookie overclockers yeah so that competition is quite interesting because it's going to take place in a in a city uh, south of uh, jakarta and basically what the what the, those guys have set up is that they are going to go there selected already through the country some guys that are going to attend there and they have a uh, one day of training where they get uh, taught about how to overclock uh, on the different platforms and then they have three days where people compete on different platforms by different manufacturers and then from then on then they reach the finals and they, 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 they can win the prize and all those guys are complete amateurs no experience whatsoever in extreme overclocking or e even just OC events in the past, for example. Yeah, that, I think that's a very that's going to be a very interesting competition, and it's going it, to, yeah, we're we're I, I think we can learn a lot from what they do in Indonesia. Yeah. Um, but okay, so that's that's the one that we do. Uh, I think we fly out on December four or something yeah. like that. Before that, you actually go to another event as well. <laughs> I'm I'm yeah. very happy I don't have to attend this one because it would be too much in my travel schedule. It, it's a lot of things, and that <laughs> event got uh, added to my schedule really, really like uh, a few weeks ago. On the and this is the event by uh, Galax. So Galax, uh, cold before Galaxy for you, uh, you guys that uh, know the brand. So th those are the guys that do um, that are famous for doing the white PCBs on their graphics cards, so the Hall of Fame cards. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year they did an event in Shanghai which was uh, an interesting event in a way that it was tied into a gaming competition, very similar to what we saw actually on Computex uh, with uh, HyperX. So a, a bit kind of a similar setup. So there's the main thing, which is a gaming competition. And then on the side, Galax is bringing overclockers there, uh, selected uh, through an online qualifier, flown out to Wuhan in China this year and competing there. So for right now, we don't have any information on what are going to be the benchmarks or the competition rules. So that's all we can say for the moment. Yeah. Well, it's got to be a, a tight traveling schedule because... And it's, on a, it's not over yet. So that would be the middle of December and then there's January, which is CES time again. And we have the HyperX OC Takeover Finals at CES 2015 that's as right. well. So that's adding into the schedule. So this is going to be <laughs> uh, in Las Vegas. Mm. And uh, yeah, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. <laughs> but in terms of overclocking and especially the results of the competitions... This is going to be, of course, yes. on HW, but you are going there. Uh, I think Christian A is going there as well. And you guys are going to work on uh, managing the submission uh, part for the competition. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll have the live coverage uh, through, the, through the scoreboard and through the HW submissions from the HyperX OC, OC Takeover 2014 final. Yeah. With, uh, I think there's 11 overclockers there. That's um, right. The, the, you can find the lineup on uh, on hwbot.org. All the information is uh, is there. Uh, it's a it's again an impressive an impressive lineup. Yeah. So that's that's on the beginning of next year, and then after that we'll follow all the hwbot world tour stops. Plus, eventually all the competitions hopefully going to take place as well during Computex. So this is going to be a very very busy first two quarters of next year. All right. Um, I think we have to pack up and leave for the airport. So this was the OC show. This was Tim. I'm Peter. See you next time. See you next time.